In the storied history of El Paso athletics, there may be no bigger name than Nolan Richardson, the only coach to win a junior college, NIT, and NCAA basketball championship. The El Paso Bowie product played forward for fellow Texas Sports Hall of Fame member coach Don Haskins at Texas Western from 1960 to 1964. But his greatest fame came as a coach at the University of Arkansas from 1985 to 2002. Championship for the Arkansas Razorbacks have completed the dream season. Richardson blazed a trail for others by becoming the first African American to coach at a major university in the South. In the storied history of El Paso athletics, there may be no bigger name than Nolan Richardson, the only coach to win a junior college, NIT, and NCAA basketball championship. The El Paso Bowie product played forward for fellow Texas Sports Hall of Fame member coach Don Haskins at Texas Western from 1960 to 1964. But his greatest fame came as a coach at the University of Arkansas from 1985 to 2002. Championship for the Arkansas Razorbacks have completed the dream season. Richardson blazed a trail for others by becoming the first African American to coach at a major university in the South. He soon became the school's winningest coach, taking the Razorbacks to three Final Fours and earning National Coach of the Year honors. Richardson's teams employed a full-court press and up-tempo style of play that was nicknamed 40 Minutes of Hell. His 1994 squad went 31-3 and, and defeated Duke 76-72 in the title game. His career Division I record is 508 wins, 206 losses, and his teams reached the postseason 16 times. Richardson also served as the coach of the Panama and Mexico national teams and the WNBA's Tulsa Shock. He was inducted into the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2008 and the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2014. Coach Nolan Richardson, molder of men and role model to many, is now a member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you. Oh. Oh, first of all, I want to give all honors to the good man upstairs. And I want to make sure I recognize all the fellow Hall of Famers. This is truly a night of thank yous. Truly a night of thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank this table here. These guys, uh, I feel sorry for them coming from all the way from El Paso, Texas. Uh, I like to speak. Steve Tredenick played. I was a player when he was a youngster, but we've been to a lot of places together. Stand up, Steve, real quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, guy that was a coach with me, helping me out, was Ronnie Cockrell. He's now the coach at Houston Baptist. Would you stand up, Ron, right quick? <laughs> The man, the man that, that created this monster, he's sitting out here, he's a tremendous newspaper man. <clears throat> His name is Ray Sanchez. Ray, Ray, will you please stand? <laughs> so, so it's like the fish story. Thanks a lot, Ray, for being here. Uh, I had, have to mention one of the coaches, uh, Lynn, Coach Lynn here, and Larry, thank you guys for showing up. I, I really appreciate it very much. You know, the word Hall of Fame, I've been very fortunate and very blessed. 
to be able to now say I'm in 12, 13, I forgot how many fames I'm in and Hall of Honors that I'm in, but I enjoy every single one of them. Matter of fact, when I was going through my coat pocket, my wife is not here, and, I, and it says on here, K-I-S-S. -S. I thought I forgot to kiss her, you know, so I called back. And I said, did I forget to kiss you or something? She says, no, I just keep it short, stupid. <laughs> so I'm going to do that, you know. But because she said that, I need to tell you something about my wife, Rose. Now, you know, she's my point guard. I got to give you that. She is the point guard. She points out every damn thing I do wrong. <laughs> she is the point guard, you know. So, but anyway, we were going in through the airport. And, and back in the day, they had, they had created this new machine. It told you how much you weigh. A little girl was on there, put a, back in the day, you had a penny. Penny meant something. Put that penny in, a little girl jumps on the scale, and a voice would come out, let's say, you weigh 99 pounds. Thank you. And I'm walking through the airport. My team's up in front. I said, come on, Rose. We've got to hurry up. The plane's going to leave us. But she was so empty, a little corn purse, you know, back there, you know, the little purse. You girls know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Picks out the penny. I keep walking. I don't need to stay where she is because it's announced throughout the airport. So the next little girl was there, she put her penny, jumped on the scale, and all of a sudden, you weigh 98 pounds, thank you. Now it's her turn. I'm way down the way. I said, well, is she going to get on or not? Yes. I said, I'll get to know how much she weigh. She put that penny in, jumped on the scale real quick as if it was going to say something. It was a long pause, long pause, long pause. And all of a sudden, this beautiful, heavy voice comes out saying, one at a time, please. <laughs> you know what, Walt, Walt Garrison, my grandmother said to me about you, <laughs> she says, anybody that can chew tobacco, dip snuff, and ride a bull has got to be damn crazy. I said, yeah, that's why he's a hell of a football player. He's half crazy. Most of them are. <laughs> but I have one kid that I got from, well, I have two of them that I got out of, of Waco, and I'll never forget. Maybe you know this guy's name, and I won't give you his name. But we played Baylor, and we were ranked number two in the country. We went one more game at Baylor, you know, that Texas center that y'all call a gymnasium? Okay, we played there. Now, you got to know the guy who ran the clock. Does anybody know the guy who runs the clock? He's still doing it, they tell me. Does anybody know his name? If you do, would you shout it out? Because I don't want to say it. What's his name? Michael? Butch. Is Butch in here? Butch ain't going to say nothing. We lost the game. And I always always when I go in the dressing room it's never my team's fault I always would say that's all right guys I didn't prepare you today as well as I should have you know we go in there and I, I'm getting ready to make my same speech and I had the boy from Fort Worth Texas by the name of Oliver Miller big Oliver I go in there and I says, getting ready to make my speech and I said that's all right, guys. He gets on the floor and he says, we're tired of you losing. <laughs> I said, damn, I ain't shot no free throws. I never took a charge. And you say you're tired of me losing? Well, that changed real quick. My grandmother is the star in my program. My grandmother was the captain of the ship because when I moved in with her, I was three years of age. We lost our mom. My sister was six months old, and my oldest sister was five. And this old lady took us in. She said, if it is to be, it's up to me. i never forget those words. 
If anything in your life that you want bad enough, it's going to be left up to you. Not the guy next to you, not the coach, not the school teachers. No one can do for you what you can do for you. And I'll never forget that. So when I stop to think about the Hall of Fame, and I keep saying, what it took them so damn long to get me in this one? <laughs> Even though I enjoy every minute of it, it's, it's kind of like you got this, all this cake and the icing is now fulfilled the cake that you've created. I, I, it's, it's a great honor. And that honor starts with thank you from people. People that gave me my first job. A black coach at the age of 24, 25 years of age getting a seventh grade job. I taught seventh grade. I taught eighth grade. I taught ninth grade. I taught tenth grade. I've been everywhere. I've been to the junior college, to the major college. No one was able to put the gold slipper in my mouth and say, go. But that old lady's words did. She says, if it is to be, it's up to you. And I remember those words. Those words is what El Paso did for me. El if I had been born and raised in another city in this state or in this great country of ours, I wouldn't be up here today, I wouldn't think. But because of someone like Mr. Frank Pollitt said, let's give this young man a chance. And you know what Granny would say? If they crack the door, bust it open. That's all you need, just to crack in the door. And I believe that. And she'd always say you're special. You're not afraid to feel what you feel. You're not afraid to speak from your heart. And that's what I talk to my players about. That's what I talk to young ladies about. You know, I was thinking that when she asked, anybody coach women? I did. I tried. <laughs> my wife told me, hell, how can you have 11 women? You cannot control one at home. <laughs> They're tough. But I, I had that opportunity. You know. I'm a firm and a lover of quotations. And since I had a seventh grade team, I had this little, I had on my wall, we check out everything but guts. See, I was a football coach too. I, I've coached everything. We check out everything but guts. We don't check those out. And these little guys come in and they read it. And I said, those who stay up with the Eagles at night cannot play. with the owls in the morning. That's pretty cool. And I had all the little Hispanic kids. And I had one black kid, Leroy. Leroy came strolling through with a toothpick in his mouth, reading. He said, hey, coach. I said, yeah, Leroy, what's up? When are we going to play Philadelphia, man? <laughs> I knew then communication was very, very strong. Or take this one, for example, seventh grade. You can't, I, I speak Spanish fluently. And the principal calls me in and says, no, I went to that school. Nolan, whatever you do, do not speak Spanish to the kids. Let's get their English. I said, but seventh grade, we're down 61 to three, halftime. <laughs> 61 to three, halftime. So I walk in there and I says, what? And I think of Coach Haskins, what would he have done? I'm a young coach right out of college. Boy, I'm proud. So I get in there and say, you got to get aggressive. And that's one of the things he would say. If you don't get aggressive, you're going to get beaten. And they look at me like, hell, we already have got beat. But... <laughs> so get aggressive. And I forget, never forget Juan raised up his hand. He said, coach, what number is he? All the signs and everything goes down. 
What is communication? Communication is being able to connect and understand one another. That's what I saw and I felt so proud about this past week. When the job was given to Shaka, there's a difference between being a black coach and a coach that happens to be black. I was a coach first. I just happened to be black because all the kids I coached were not all black. They were Hispanic, Anglos, Chinese, Indians, but they were my kids. And they call me coach. And that's the key, and that's, that's, that's the glamour that is really the true fact. What do you think he's gonna do? I said, I hope he does well. He's got all the capabilities of doing well. I said, the only thing that he might have a problem with, people won't understand his game style. You know. I said, I, when I got to Arkansas, they thought, wow, where the hell they get this guy from? Where they get this guy from? He don't play like none of us. No, I don't. I didn't want to play like none of you. I wanted to play my kind of game. And I said, that's hopefully his attitude. Play your game because it's important that your kids see through your eyes what you want them to do. That's important. Not what old guy over here that played 1937. Not the guy over here that played on the first grade team and he's a coach now. You can't listen to those things. You have to be strong enough to do what you want to do. I can say in closing that I've been blessed. I've been blessed in a town of El Paso that has a school named after me. A school. And I said this when we accepted the award at the Naismith, is that my, even my little granddaughter said, starts crying when they were awarding the schools and its keys. And she started crying because she thought it was time for me to leave the earth. Grandpa, you died because they don't name nothing after nobody until they're dead. <laughs> yeah. No, baby, I'm, I'm alive. Once again, I want to thank the, all of you. I want to congratulate all of you. And I, I hope and I pray that things become better as we grow older and understanding. That's what life's all about, is growing older and understanding. Thank you, and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.